Hello there, welcome to Bros International, the English speaking show here on Bros. It's great to have you with us for this latest edition, which is all about the Irish community here in the city. In just a minute, we'll be learning how to play GAA football. But first, we're off to the James Joyce pub. That's an Irish pub in the EU quarter. And we're sitting down with Tony Connolly, a well-known Irish broadcaster and author renowned for his reporting on Brexit. Hello, Maeve. How are you? Good yeah, to good to see you. you. Yeah, you too. Welcome to Brooks. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. So, so. This is your favourite Irish pub? It is my favourite Irish pub, especially for football. There's your channel. I know, exactly, yeah. Cheers. Good to see it's you. It's being Irish in Brussels. Exactly, yeah. Tony Connolly, welcome to Brothers International. Thanks Pleasure. so much for being here. How did you end up in Brussels? I was working for RTE in Dublin and I'd always wanted to get a foreign posting. The Brussels job uh, came up and I went for that and got it. That was 2001. When I initially came here, there were two reporters and it stayed that way for about seven or eight years. But then I've been on my own since 2013. At a certain point, you have plenty of experience. You know how to navigate the European institutions. It's almost like it just makes more sense to have someone there who has that kind of journalistic memory and familiarity with Brussels just to keep the person there. For the first six or seven years, I had tremendous variety in what I was doing. I could uh, yeah, do a lot of the uh, EU stuff where, where necessary and travel all over Europe. I mean, I'm, I'm the Europe editor, so it's not just EU stuff. In 2008, the financial crisis happened, and since then, I've been much more grounded in big stories like the terror attacks, the refugee crisis, and then, of course, Brexit. The events of today have been very damaging for Theresa I went to bed thinking that it would be a victory for Remain, and when I heard the news the next morning, I was really stunned. And then, of course, you had to spring into action. I think at a certain point later that day, I had this uh, sense of like, actually, uh, this could be a story that is going to dominate my life for years. Connolly, who's in Salzburg? Well, sir, and then I was asked to write a book about Brexit. So again, in turn, deepened my understanding of the issues. Yeah, after a while, you, you develop a bit of authority in the subject. What is like a day in the life of a journalist like yourself, like here in Brussels? Well, I would usually get up early in the morning and, and probably do a radio report for Morning Ireland. And then I'm making calls and uh, possibly editing a, a TV story for lunchtime, maybe doing a live report from my office. So it can be a long day. And if it's, if it's Brexit related or even about Ukraine, again, because I'm known now through Brexit, and I broadcast in English. Uh, because a lot of UK broadcasters have left, I'm often doing maybe four or five BBC interviews a day. The, the, the meaning and the nature of this. And you mentioned Ukraine there. You were actually in Ukraine earlier this year. Can you tell us more about that? So I was in Ukraine just right before the invasion and then uh, came back for a few days to Brussels, but then I went back on the day before the invasion itself. So I was there for the first hours when the invasion happened, which was a, an extraordinary experience. Kiev, where we have been told to there must be something about Brussels that got you hooked because you're still here. Tell us what you love about the city. I love um, that there are so many big parks that are really well maintained and clean and, and beautiful, like right in the heart of Brussels. I cycle everywhere in Brussels. Expats are real complainers when they want to be, but I actually find cycling in Brussels pretty, pretty good. Great to see you, right? In this report, we get to know the Irish community here that are highly involved in a special time of football, Gaelic football. We couldn't have a report zooming in on the Irish in Brussels without having at least a little bit of rain. Yeah, that's it. We love playing out rain, snow, sun, doesn't really matter. But yeah, it's back to normal now anyway, so it's good. 
what we have going on right now is hurling and football. Uh, we're Belgium GA, the Gaelic Athletic Association. And for any of our viewers who are not as familiar as we may be with Gaelic football, just explain what it is and of course hurling too. So Gaelic football is kind of a mixture between basketball, soccer and rugby. It doesn't have the it has a bit of intensity and physicality, but not the same for rugby. And it's it's played on a 15, 15 aside game. It's similar to hurling, it's kind of like a hockey, rugby, football hybrid. It's very hard to explain. It's known as the fastest sport on grass. So we've just started back uh, a bit of winter training coming into the end of the year, so it's good to see. And we started out here in 2003 with Belgium GEA and we have around 100 to 120 members. A lot of Irish people do it, it's our Irish national sport. We're here now with Marla, so tell us about your involvement. Are you a hurler, or are you a footballer? Okay, well, I'm a footballer uh, by choice, but I call myself a, a camogie tourist. And Marla, when you're here playing, do you feel like you're back in Ireland? Yeah, actually, because uh, I work in a multilingual environment. Um, I play basketball here and all that's through French. So it's really nice to come here and we're all speaking, sometimes Irish, sometimes English. But just hearing the accents make you feel like you're at home. There and of course, being accompanied by this rain, I definitely feel like I'm at home. The community around is quite small and we find each other in different places uh, as a result of kind of knowing each other through here and, and everybody knows someone through someone else. We have WhatsApp groups. Often if there's jobs going, the girls or the guys will put a little job ad and say, hey, if anyone knows someone or if there's a room available or someone looking for a room, uh, we, we kind of help each other out in that way. It is very Irish, but it's also open to a lot of the broader community because a lot of people see it and are like, what is this? And they want to join in and we're welcoming And now, right now, everyone's out playing on the pitch, but I imagine there's a whole social life as well that surrounds this. So where do you guys go then after, and women, of course, to hang out after you play? Uh, so a lot of time when we play tournaments, we travel around Europe. So during the summer, we're in Munich. Some of the lads and the girls are going to Amsterdam, and then there's a tournament in Galicia in Spain. So a lot of time we would have the tournaments but it's an extremely social thing. We all travel around Europe together. We all kind of, you know, if there's a wedding or if there's someone's birthday, because we don't have family over here, this is kind of like a family. Amazing. So if people who are intrigued want to sign up and, and start playing, how can they do that? Yeah, so basically uh, Belgium GA on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you can send me an email. We're welcome to all skill levels and all uh, and beginners as well. But we are high intensity, but then we also have maybe second team. We have a big club. We're fortunate. We're one of the biggest clubs in Europe. You can try and have your level very high, but also if you just want to have the crack and just want to kind of socially come along, there's a second team as well. I think it's safe to say we absolutely love Brussels. It's a great city. It's easy to get around. It's a lot of fun. It's dynamic. It's socially great fun. We have these facilities here. It's great, everybody that's here stays here. Very few of them go and when they do, they're very sad to leave. Next in this report, we're going in here to the Wild Geese, an Irish pub here in the EU quarter of Brussels that reopened after a tricky period during COVID. We'll be catching up with some of the Irish community and finding out if a pint of Guinness tastes just as good here as it does back in Ireland. You're from Ireland, what brought you to Brussels? Well, originally I came here about 10 years ago for work. I was working in European institutions. Um, I left then for a couple of years and um, I came back because I love the city and because um, my girlfriend moved here. And Dave, why are there so many Irish people here working in Brussels? If you want to really have a massive impact, Brussels is a place to be. You can, you can work away on different topics like, um, like the environment, like climate change in Ireland and that's really important work and it needs to be done, but it's a small population. You can put in the same effort here in Brussels and you're having a positive impact on the lives of hundreds of millions of people and then people beyond as well. And that's, that makes this a really interesting place to work. 
us where you're from. Uh, just outside of Glasgow, yeah, both my parents are from the west coast of Scotland, but grandparents are from Ireland. So do you feel a little bit Irish? Scotland and Ireland, it's not much difference between the two, do you know. A very similar mentality. And is it fun working here at the Wild Geese? I imagine you encounter a lot of uh, the Irish community here. I mean, yeah, it's fun. It's kind of like home away from home. Is the Irish community very transient? Do you find people come for a while and then leave? I find that they actually stay. I find that I've met quite a few Irish and they've said that they've just came to Brussels just to visit and they've actually moved here. I know a lot of people, I have a lot of friends that um, have just came to find work and just to stay for a little while, to save, to go back, to go off travelling again and they've actually ended up staying. So is the Guinness as good here as it is in Ireland? It's quite close to it. I mean, I have to say I'm very privileged to come from um, the west, uh, southwest of Ireland and the Guinness is beautiful there. But the Guinness is pretty good here, it's very drinkable. You're a Gael Gore, so would you meet a lot of Irish speakers here, native Irish speakers, and, and spend a lot of time with them and do a lot to promote the language? Yeah, when I arrived in 1995, there were maybe five or six of us that were native Irish speakers. Since Irish became an official language uh, in the European Union, there are now about 180 to 200 people employed in the Irish, uh, speaking Irish in the EU institutions. We have a huge amount of opportunities to meet the Irish speakers and every year uh, in March we have two weeks where we have a lot of activities promoting the Irish language and we're also trying to have uh, some music sessions as well in different pubs where we can meet and speak in Irish. And do you know how many Irish people are living in Brussels and, and do they all know each other? The, the estimate is that there's between four and 5,000 Irish people uh, living in Brussels. And of those, there are about 800 people working in the EU institutions. The first thing that Irish people do when they come over here is they sign up to the GAA club. Uh, it is fantastic for any young Irish person to come over or families to come over and integrate into the local sports there. We also have a very active cycling club called the Brussels Wheelers, which have about 80 members, of which about half are Irish, but there are also a lot of Belgians that are uh, cycling with, with us. Where you will find a lot of people from the EU institutions or those that work around it, is that they will sneak in here for a quiet drink um, at about 6 p.m. after work on a Friday, just before we go home and have dinner with the family. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid that's all we've time for for this edition of Bras International, which was all about the Irish community here in the city. Thank you so much for being with us. Slán, and see you soon.